Laura Hernand will explain us how to acquire Doppler recordings during echocardiography. She will show us how to use different views, but also to uh, use the appropriate settings to acquire correct and appropriate Doppler recordings. And finally, she will assess the different flows with the different Doppler modalities. So we will see the standard Doppler acquisition, uh, viewing in each view uh, which uh, Doppler acquisition I can have in the standard examination. So we will start with a parasternal long axis view. So on the parasternal long axis view, I will be able to assess the um, arctic flow with the color Doppler. So I will put the uh, color box on the valve and reduce the size in order to look for an arctic reg regurgitation. And then I will move to the mitral valve in order to see if there is a mitral regurgitation. I can tilt a little bit the probe in order to assess the whole mitral valve. Okay, so now I will switch on the short axis view and I will start with the aortic valve. I will try to assess again by the color Doppler the aortic flow and to look for search um, an aortic regurgitation. Then I will move to the pulmonary valve and I can see here a very, very small pulmonary regurgitation here. You can see here. And I will try now to assess the um, right ventricular outflow. So I will take the cursor and try to put the sample just behind the pulmonary cusp and try to have the um, pulse stopper in the right ventricular outflow tract. So of course I will adjust the baseline and the scale I can adapt also the speed. I will try to check if I am still in the good position. Adjust again and then go back. And here I will be able to assess the pulmonary acceleration time, which is the beginning, the onset of the flow until the peak of the flow which can be a way to assess uh, pulmonary arterial pressure. So now I will go back and I will try to acquire a continuous Doppler on the valve. So I will try to position. So the important when you are using Doppler is always to be parallel to the flow that you want to assess. So here I will try to record this uh, pulmonary regurgitation. So I try to be the most parallel as possible. And then I will start the continuous Doppler. So I will... So this is not really beautiful, but here there is some variation that are due to the breathing of the subject. But here you can see the pulmonary regurgitation and here it's the, uh, the anterograde flow uh, within the valve. So now I will move to the tricuspid valve in order to see if there is a tricuspid regurgitation, so I will put the color box on the valve. So there is a very, very, very small one. 
so I will probably not be able to assess it by continuous Doppler, but I will try. So same principle, I need to be very, very par parallel to the flow. So I try to adjust my view to be uh, parallel and then I start, start the continuous Doppler mode. So you can see here that we have this very small regurgitation, but of course this is so small that we will not be able here to, to have a reliable assessment of the pulmonary uh, systolic pressure, arterial systolic pressure. But I think that I can't do better in this subject. And then still in the parasternal short axis view, I will assess by the color Doppler the interatrial septum and check that there is no communication, abnormal communication between the two atrium. Okay, so now we will move to the mitral valve. In order to assess the mitral flow with the color box, so I am adjusting, of course, the size of the box to the valve. I will remove the cursor. And this view is sometimes useful in order to assess the origin of a mitral regurgitation. So here there is a very, very small one, so it's kind of difficult to assess it, but here we can see this very small regurgitation that is really, really central. Okay, so now we'll, we'll move to the apical views. So in the apical views, I will be able, I will try to assess first the mitral inflow. So I will start to put, by putting the box, the color box on the mitral valve in order to see if there is a mitral regurgitation. And this is the case. We saw, we saw it in the parasternal views. So there is a very small regurgitation that is probably physiologic, of course. And now I will acquire the mitral inflow by the pulse Doppler. So in order to do that, I will put the sample volume at the tip of the mitral leaflet. I will try to be kind of really parallel to the, to the long axis of the left ventricle, which means kind of perpendicular of the mitral annulus, and I will start the pulse Doppler. I'm still adapting. So here you can see the E wave and the A wave. That's, and we are able to assess the uh, diastolic feeling. So now in order to assess other parameters for the analysis of the left ventric ventricular feeling pressure, I will try to assess the pulmonary vein flow. So I will reduce the size of the box and I will be uh, guided by the color Doppler to be able to know where is the, uh, the vein. And I will put the sample size within the vein. 
I'm trying always to be very parallel and I'm starting the post Doppler. Of course, in order to assess this flow, you have to remove the high PRF. I'm adapting the gain, the scale. So I will go back to the 2D view to adjust the sample volume and go back. So here you can see the S wave, the D wave and the A wave, which is sometimes really difficult to define. And in order to measure the uh, duration of the E wave, I have to increase the uh, sweep speed in order to be able to well define the onset and uh, the end of the E wave that I have to compare to the uh, duration of the um, a wave, mitral A wave duration. Okay, so now in order to finish with the um, diastolic parameters, I will try to assess the velocities at uh, the mitral annulus using the tissular uh, Doppler in a pulse wave uh, modality. So I have still to think that I have to be parallel, not to the flow, but to the movements that I want to measure. So I have to be very parallel to the movement of the mitral annulus and I have to adjust my view to be parallel. So I'm putting the sample volume at the mitral annulus and I am starting the pulse wave modality. So I'm trying to be parallel to the movement of the wall. And you can see here the velocities of the mitral annulus. So here is the peak of the isovolumic contraction. Here this, the systolic velocity. Here is the peak of the um, isovolumic relaxation time. And here is the E prime velocity, which is the, uh, the uh, early diastolic velocity and the A prime velocity. So the most used uh, parameter is the E prime velocity that you will compare to the E prime, uh, to the E wave of the mitral flow. So now I will assess the same on the septal side of the mitral annulus, still trying to be parallel to the movements of the wall. And I still have the same thing the systolic velocity, the isovolumic contraction, uh, here the isovolumic relaxation, E prime, A prime, and I will assess mostly this parameter. So now we are done with the diastolic parameters that we use to assess the left ventricular filling pressure. And I will move to the left ventricular outflow so in order to assess it, I have to move to a five chamber apical view. And to put the sample just behind the um, aortic cusp. Of course, I will start with an analysis of the flow with the color box in order to be sure that there is no aortic regurgitation. Now I will start the pulse stopper in order to assess the left ventricular outflow 
And I will use, of course, this parameter in order to assess the cardiac output. If I'm going too uh, close to the valve, I will have a kind of acceleration of the flow that is not assessing the uh, cardiac output anymore. So I have to be to have the sample volume that is really a little bit below the cusp, the aortic cusp. And here, of course, I will um, measure, I will trace the VTI of the flow in order to assess the cardiac output. So now let's move to the assessment of the aortic valve flow by itself. And I have to, to use the continuous uh, Doppler for that. So still parallel to the flow, I am just adjusting the parameter and decreasing the gain in order to not be with a saturated flow signal. And you can see here the flow in the aortic valve. That is, of course, with higher speed if you have uh, an aortic stenosis. So now we will move on the right side. And I will try again to assess the tricuspid regurgitation. So the important is to check in multiple views, especially for the tricuspid regurgitation, but also for the other flows, it's to check in multiple views that you don't have a regurgitation, but also to analyze the uh, inflow in different views. So here I'm checking again that I don't have a tricuspid regurgitation. I'm always seeing the same one. But you can see here that if I'm trying to um, acquire a continuous Doppler in order to measure the tricuspid regurgitation, I will be almost perpendicular to the flow. And of course, uh, I will have a signal that is absent or I will underestimate the tricuspid uh, regurgitation if I'm not parallel but perpendicular to the flow. So imagine that we have a higher grade of tricuspid regurgitation. In that case, I will try to adapt my view in order to be very parallel to the flow and then to acquire the continuous Doppler in the, in the good way without underestimation of the flow. So it would be in that case, in this view. But of course, the, the uh, trigger speed regurg here is really small, so I will not have enough signal to have a reliable measurement. OK. So now I can try to assess the, the systolic velocity of the trigger speed annulus. And for that, I will go back to the uh, tissular Doppler in a pulse wave modality. So again, I'm trying to be parallel to the movement of the wall, which is not always easy. OK. So here I will have the same kind of velocity profile that than in the, at the mitral annulus, except that usually that there is no uh, peak of isovolumic relaxation uh, at the tricuspid annulus. So here I have the isovolumic contraction uh, velocity. Here is the systolic velocity that is uh, a useful parameter to assess the right ventricular function. And here I usually don't have an isovolumic relaxation peak and I have a E prime and A prime which are diastolic velocities of the tricuspid annulus. Okay, so now I will go to the, I will move to the two chamber view 
And I will, of course, assess the mitral valve with the color Doppler. I will adjust the box in order to have an adapted sample. And I can see again this very small physiologic uh, mitral regurgitation. Then I will move to the three chamber view. And I will assess again the mitral valve, tilting the probe in order to assess all the mitral valve from the anterior commissure to the posterior one. And I will go back to the aortic cusp. Also checking that there is no aortic regurgitation. And I'm systematically checking in every view. I'm repeating that. Okay, so now we will move to the suprasternal view, maybe to the subcostal view first. So I will ask you, yeah, to go back here. So in the subcostal view, I will try to assess first. It can be useful to assess the interatrial septum because if there is a, a communication between the two atria, I will be very parallel to this flow in this view. So I will try to check with the color box, with the color Doppler box, that I, I have no communi communication, abnormal communication between the two atria. So I will ask you to brief a bit, yeah, and to stop for a bit, and I will assess the flow. So I can't see any abnormal flow here. Okay. So you can brief. And now I will try to assess the uh, the flow of, of the hepatic veins. So of course I'm always trying to find a vein that is parallel to the sample, to the beam, sorry. Can brief again. Okay, stop. So you can brief. Um, so we are seeing here uh, the hepatic veins flow. So this is um, the principle is the, the, of the acquisition is the same than for the uh, pulmonary vein. You have to uh, check where is the uh, hepatic vein with the uh, color Doppler, then to try try to be parallel, and then start the pulse Doppler modality. So, and without the high PRF, you have to be in a low PRF uh, modality. So here you can see the systolic wave, the diastolic wave, and the E wave of the flow. And it's sometimes useful, useful in order to, um, to estimate the right atrial pressure. So now let's move to the suprasternal view. So I will ask you, yeah, to put the head like this. I will decrease the depth in order to be focused on the aorta. So you can see here the cross of the aorta and the descending aorta. And I will try to assess the flow in the descending aorta in order to be able to say that there is no aortic coarctation. So still, in order to check that I'm parallel to the flow, 
I'm checking with the color and then I will do, I'm trying to be very parallel and I'm acquiring a continuous wave Doppler. And you can see here the flow. Of course, it's negative because it's going uh, not uh, it's it's not going um, to the to the transductor, but away from the transductor. So it's the it's uh, the flow here that is a negative flow in the descending aorta, and I am able to check that there is no abnormal coarctation in this patient. So I think that we uh, saw all the standard Doppler acquisition and um, I think that this is the basic way to uh, assess the uh, different valvular uh, flows uh, during a standard examination. With those, those flows we are able also to assess hemodynamics which, are, which is really important during every uh, examination, every exam. Thank you. So take home messages of this examination is that we have to use multiple views, multiple modalities, appropriate settings and finally to have an appropriate alignment with the different flows.